YouTubers and Cowboys fans. It's that VA Dallas Cowboy fan coming back at you. Told you I ain't done with y'all today. I'd like to continue on our discussions. This time, it's about... Uh, I'm going to do something about Byron Jones and Amari Cooper. Now, the NFL folks and uh, the media have decided to... Uh, start playing fantasy you know put some fantasy football with free agents free agents to be and you know they did a couple articles about landing spots for certain players so you know with the Cowboys having so many players out there that could be free agents they decided to do a little looky-loo with uh, Amari Cooper and uh, Byron Jones now, I tell you, it's an interesting some interesting lists. Uh, they're both good lists. They're both great fits for these guys if they the Cowboys do not retain them. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, the interesting part is the one team that's on both lists. And ooh, if they do somehow manage to pull it off, uh, I I don't see our chances of winning the East again for a while. Why? Because that team is the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes. Reports are that if they were available and Philly's got the cap, they would be trying. Oh, wow. The Eagles will be trying to land Amari Cooper in free agency and Byron Jones. Now, those are great fits because they need a receiver. Uh, and as they've seen, he can be a difference maker. Uh, and Byron Jones, he can be part of the renaissance for their defense because they need corners. Could you imagine if Cowboys let them go and they do end up with the Eagles? I mean, if that ain't shooting yourself in the foot against enemy, I don't know what is. I mean, Jason Garrett going OC to the Giants, that's fine. I mean, if the if the man changes up his approach to football and does something different, it'll shock us and it'll be worth noting. But if he's the same old Jason Garrett who hasn't changed anything in the decade with us, I don't see them changing anything. You're going to run Shaquan Barkley right up the middle, right into the heart of our defense, and you're going to put Daniel Jones in a bad position to where he's going to have to win the game. And if you're playing from behind, Daniel Jones is going to have to throw like 40, 50 times a game. But maybe he's changed. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, next topic, running game. Uh, a lot of people have said that you can interchange any running back and they'll still be successful. That's bull because not everybody has the same offensive lines. Not everybody has the same scheme. Uh, not every running back can scheme fit with the team. So you can't just use any running back. You just have to have a back that's special for that occasion for that team. Because look at uh, Mostert, Mo Mostert with the 49ers. That man's went through 17 before something finally clicked with the 49ers. So don't say anybody could just run back there. He just did his thing. And you see when he went against a defense that could shut him down, he didn't do anything. But the articles... I guess ESPN has been reporting today has been that the Arizona Cardinals are looking to release David Johnson and the Rams are looking to trade possibly Todd Gurley. So the funny thing is both of those guys got paid before Zeke. Now Zeke is a generational back, uh, which they thought Todd Gurley was going to be, but then injuries started messing around with him but he had that well I wouldn't say he had an excellent season that Super Bowl run they had because if it wasn't Todd Gurley they had uh, CJ Anderson so the drop off wasn't really there because most teams plan for Todd Gurley and they got CJ Anderson running it up on on two they weren't ready for that so that made the uh, Rams look good plus as much play action as they played a running back probably could have looked good in that system. C.J. Anderson knows he's been around long enough. 
but it's funny those guys got paid everybody thought hey these guys are the next Zeke or they're better than Zeke and look at where it's happening now now they're talking about getting rid of them so you think the Cowboys made a mistake in making Zeke the highest paid running back do you think that the Cowboys will be releasing uh, Zeke or cutting him I doubt it I doubt they trade him I mean you paid for the guy you're going to run him I mean who wouldn't if you do right and it works he's going to run all over a defense but we'll just have to see that's just what the word is right now uh let's see other reports out they're kind of wondering you know what the future holds for our defensive line uh because as you know we only got what one or two guys on the defensive line still under contract for next year Everybody else is a restricted or unrestricted free agent. So you're kind of wondering what possibly this team is going to look like next year. Uh, Tyrone Crawford's probably, well, okay, three and two and a half players left. Tyrone Crawford is probably coming back, but you kind of wonder, is he worth it? He's going to be the highest player against the cap on the team. Do you cut him? Because it's going to behoove us to save that money. Uh, you never know what to do with him. He provides a veteran presence, and he's a locker room leader. And we kind of missed that last year with Demarcus Lawrence running his mouth everywhere. Nobody, somebody should have shut him up and told him to play better instead of worrying about what people thought of him. Uh, Michael Bennett's probably gone. Robert Quinn, he wants to stay, but looking at the price ranges out there, I don't think he's going to stay because he's going to want to make that money. Now, it's nice if you lived in an NFL world where everybody was about the team and they're willing to take less to help the team, but that's not the way it works. That's why the whole Dak Prescott thing is a misnomer because the market dictates paying a quarterback no matter what. I mean, even crappy quarterbacks, backups get paid. And it's because they play the most important position in all of football. It's natural. You have to pay the guys. I mean, you're not going to go out here and give a veteran $600,000 and think he wants to stick with your team. No. He wants to get paid millions. Like, if I'm going to start your team, I'm going to get paid some of that starter money. I'm not just going to get paid backup money when I'm a starter. No. And then you got the young guys who are outplaying their contracts in their first couple years and they're going to escalate that price every single season and with CBAs and all that and the money going up every year from television deals and whatnot, the salary cap goes up so you think more than likely the majority of your money is going to go towards quarterback so quarterback left tackles pass rush that's where most of your money is usually going to go on a team regardless of you know how much the team is going to be having in cap space that's where your money's going after that you can break down the corners wide receivers running backs running back maybe like some of the last things you think about before in fact they probably the last things before special teams before you're really thinking about you know kicking money out to people uh it's a shame but it is what it is and the cowboys know that Dak Prescott knows that. That's why he's taking the sit back and wait approach. Because he knows as soon as Kansas City wants to sit down and start negotiating with Mahomes, Dak's asking price is going to go up. So it would behoove them, yet again, to get on top of this and pay the man his fair share now before he starts really asking, I want Pat Mahomes' money. I want Deshaun Watson money. I want some of what they got. Why can't you afford that? And it, it just kind of goes back bafflingly to Tony Romo. You paid that man $100 million and we were coming off three, eight and eight seasons, but you paid him money, no doubt, without question. And that's when we were in salary cap hell still. But you're have, having hesitations with Dak Prescott? 
I don't know. I think that's just a shrewd way for the Cowboys to keep doing business out here. I mean, everybody talks glowingly of the team, usually. Well, about 95% of ex-players talk glowingly about the team and the organization and how Jerry Jones treats them, and they love it. Problem is, it's a business. Jerry knows that. That's why we're still having a problem with Des Bryant. He wants to come back. Jerry would love to have him back. He wish he never left, but it's a business. If he wasn't producing and having all that money pumped into him was not going to help this team if it was never healthy. So, I mean, for a guy who says he wants to come back at veteran minimum, sure, but I doubt he'll want that. Uh, I mean, you could ask his, you know, real dedication towards the team if you want to come back you're not going to get paid because you want that Jason Witten uh, kind of play you want to come back and be only on red zone trips or something like that that's great I want to pay you red zone only money <laughs> which is not that much so you can't come out here with an exorbitant asking price and the fact that you're damaged goods because we don't know what you look like on the field after not playing for so long. But it is what it is. Uh, that's about it for right now. We're still gathering information about what we're going to do. Because it's a long offseason. And as much as we say it's a long offseason, it's pretty short when you really get down to it. Uh, next thing you know, it's going to be free agency starting and draft next thing you know training camp hopefully it'll be uh starting for us sooner because we do have a new head coach and we do have guys going into the hall of fame so we may have to play the hall of fame game we don't know until the schedule comes out uh that's pretty much it right now we like what we're hearing uh everybody's excited the players are excited for the new coaches. The coaches are excited to get to work with the players. Uh, I mean, the stories about Mike McCarthy not returning, like Jalen Smith's phone calls and stuff like that, that's fine and dandy. It's the offseason. People are busy, uh, especially with a new team. He's got to worry about getting everything on his end straight before he's got to go out here on the field and start talking to these guys. But I think it'll come about when it comes about. So we're all just stuck in a uh, holding pattern until we find out something new, right? All right, I'm going to have to leave it here because it is getting pitch black and it is raining harder and we got tornado warnings around here. Y'all have a good day. Stay safe wherever you are. Love one another. Hug your family. Say you love them. And I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.